Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to Xbox On. And as you may know, every month, brand new games are constantly being added from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox Back Compact program. And this month, there are loads of awesome games on offer, so let's go take a look. Okay, so we're starting off with a little bit of Ghostbusters. Who's gonna call? Ghostbusters! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, sorry, it has, it has to be done, right? It is Ghostbusters, Marshmallow Man, <laughs> like the legendary Marshmallow Man. Look at that. I mean, Look at that. How can you not like it? He's gorgeous. So, yeah, so with this this game, you actually play sort of like the, the, the new member of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. You, you don't actually play as uh, one of the original guys. You, you just sort of like this team member that you've joined. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, the Ghostbusters game actually has the original cast from the film, and you do play as that kind of like the 50 member, you know, yeah. there's the random guy in the corner who you yeah. don't actually see in the films. It's obviously also voiced by the original car. So Bill Murray is in it, yes. which you'll be happy to know about. Bill's my fave. <laughs> uh, and, and also, another thing, you mm -hmm. can cross the beams, right? For those, yeah. of, for those of you that know the films, <laughs> right? You're not it's supposed important. to cross the film. In the game, you can cross the beams. Uh, but it's a third person shooter, you've got loads of different abilities, mm -hmm. you can set traps, there's loads, loads of awesome features, and it's kind of like a really enjoyable overall experience, especially mm. if you're a Ghostbusters fan. You can hop in, you'll kind of already know that kind of like backstory, the history, you'll notice some of the ghosts that you come up against as well and then kind of having all the like little twerks and like mm. kind of things from the cast as well like just kind of voicing the backs just makes you like feel amazing. And it's like it's, it's like childhood dream isn't it being one of the Ghostbusters? Yeah. Like this is finally making it come true. Yeah as a kid you'd be running around going like Ghostbusters! <laughs> With like your hoover. Yeah, like, and, uh, <laughs> yeah that's, that's how things and then you'd like kind of just like stick it on your brother and just be like why aren't you going in you are a ghost. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. It's also quite a little bit of a challenge as well. It's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. it's not just like one of those kind of like this roll through games. It's got a really good story, you'll mm. notice bits from the film, um, like I said, all the ghosts and all that sort of jazz. Um, but yeah. And visually speaking, it's it's quite a pretty game. Like the facial animation and stuff is uh, in the cutscenes isn't they're doing it. Nice job, it looks good. Yeah, I think that's the thing that they want to focus on is just make, giving you that rid like that kind of opportunity to kind of relive the mm, films mm. Um, because obviously it's been quite a while since those films come out yeah. and uh, it's just a chance to kind of hop back into that universe. Yeah. So you're welcome, huh? And uh, to the Rodriguez, Alachayim from the Ghostbusters. Right, before you get into this, this game is messed up. It, it, yeah, that's a really, actually, perfect way of describing <laughs> it. A really messed up game. So this is Shadows of the Damned. It's by Suda51, they're like a famous Japanese dev. And it's essentially made by, sort of like, the Japanese horror dream team. <laughs> so you've got Shinji Mikami, who made Resident Evil 4. So yeah. classic, and you can kind of see Yeah, I, I was kind of noticed that it. when you're kind of like looking at the gameplay, it's kind of like the, uh, the red dot site, mm -hmm, effectively, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, where you're shooting is exactly the same as it was in Resident Evil, which is pretty cool, because it's kind of then, if you've played Resident Evil 4, you'll kind of feel quite comfortable playing yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. So it's got that nice little sort of uh, uh, similarities to it. And it's also the music's by Akira Yamoka, who did the, who did the music for Silent Hill, uh, which is some of the creepiest, most atmospheric music. Uh, so them combined makes such a good game. It's got sort of like the, it's got the creepy, it's got the um, sort of like, I mean, look at this, we've got this man with three sets of eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, like it is overall just creepy. It's and also, so weird. there is a lot of rude kind of, kind of, um, like kind of hints and kind of. Yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the gun called again? The boner, <laughs> right? So your gun is called the boner, yeah. okay? And um, it's very yeah. crude in yeah. terms of its humor. Yeah, it's a beast of a gun though. Like if you see all the zombie heads and all the demons and all that sort of stuff, you just kind of pop them off left, right, and center. Yeah, they're flying all over the place. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you like, you know, you're into your horror games, but you like uh, something a little bit more quirky, uh, also kind of funny, but also horrible. It's really hard to describe this game. It's like the weirdest blend of all the genres and emotions in one. But I think it, the thing about it though is it is a really enjoyable game because it does mix kind of that all those kind of like quirky Japanese mm, games. Mm. Like Resident Evil exactly. and stuff like that. It's kind of got taking the best of bit about all the worlds. Mm. It's also like kind of when you take a full of their heads, it's kind of got that sniper so elite like, effect so as well. I was about to say, like sniper elite, um, where it's all just exploding in slow motion. Yeah, the, um, kit, the kind of bullet cam and stuff like that, and just kind of seeing like, their heads explode in slow motion, seeing everything come at you. Uh, it's definitely one of the weirdest, creepiest games. Yeah, yeah, um, that's but fair. If you're into horror games, if you're into games like Resident Evil, yeah. Silent Hill, you will really enjoy this. Yeah, Resident um, Evil 4 fans, play this. You will enjoy it, definitely. What have they got to talk about? Once your soul rolls into town, that's it. You're damned. All right, now this is something that I am particularly fond of mm -hmm. because this 
changed first person shooters for me. This was like a long time ago. I actually remember hopping on this game on Christmas Eve, on, no, on Christmas Day, not Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And I was just sat there rooted all Christmas Day just playing Battlefield 3. Uh, uh, I would just uh, like to apologize for the gameplay as well. <laughs> right, I was in Sweden, so Matt kind of went and we're like, I'll go capture yeah. the gameplay. Um, it just exploded. <laughs> I'm a really bad backseat game when it comes to first person shooters, but you will love this game. If you haven't had a go on it, it's got everything you would expect from a Battlefield game. It's got air combat, mm. it's got tanks, it's got incredible kind of foot confrontation as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And most of the games these days are either futuristic, back in the past, this is a modern era shooter. So it's kind of got guns you're gonna recognize. It's got like the M4, um, it's got shotguns, pistols, modernized stuff that you'll see on okay. like all over the place. Are, still, are people still playing online then? Is it yeah, still like, quite a popular? Fan base? Well, partially because it came available on Xbox Back Compat. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You've got a lot more players on it again. Uh, it's got an awesome single player campaign as well. So mm -hmm. if you kind of want to like, kind of experience a campaign play, because this scene that you're seeing now is actually very early on in the game, and you jump onto the tube, wow. right? And it's just, it's just epic from start to finish, and it's got an awesome story. Multiplayer, and obviously, you're going to recognize stuff because it is set in the modern era. Mm -hmm. Air combat of jets is amazing. Tanks, obviously awesome, especially like kind of against foot troops, and you can just go destroy all the buildings. Nice. That's one of the big, biggest things of Battlefield is the destructible environment. Isn't it one of the uh, sort of first games that had destructible environments? No, actually, it was Bad Company 2 that kind of started bringing the whole destructible environment mm. to Battlefield. Um, this was just a little bit before, but Bad Company 2 ah. is also available on Bat Compact, which is something I'm quite excited about because for me, this was back then, because I used to play a lot of Call of Duty, this was my preferred Battlefield style of game because mm -hmm. it had a lot of humor in it, it was really funny, and also, of course, it kind of brought in destructible environment yeah. where I, back then, I was a bit like super excited because it was completely new to kind of first person shooters. Normally, it was kind of very kind of linear and you'd kind of play the maps, stuff wouldn't blow up, mm. you just kind of, you had what you had. But now you go up to a building and you're like, oh right, there's a hole, like, there's a building here, there's people on the other side. Oh, let's just blow a hole in it, um, which is pretty cool. So yeah. it adds like a whole new layer. That's cool, um, a lot more strategic then, like you can work around sort of, yeah, but know, it, things in the way. It, yeah, <laughs> like if, if it sinks in your way, you can just, just kind of, it. just blow it up. <laughs> um, but also you've kind of got those like huge different variations of kind of map and environments mm -hmm. and kind of you get these huge fights a bit like what you're seeing now where you've just got people running at you you're taking cover there's rpgs flying across your face uh, it creates some really intense experiences and this is kind of the first time i properly started falling in love with battlefield mm. up to now when you've got battlefield yeah, one yeah um, the story as well is also pretty epic um, that just it's just a game that you're gonna hop on if you're a first person shooter fan you're gonna hop on you're gonna really enjoy there's the type of environment the campaign humor is amazing mm -hmm. as well because it's the same characters from the first bad company mm -hmm. um, which is some of like kind of a lot of people's all-time favorites yeah. uh, from the franchise so definitely if you haven't played bad company 2 hop on give it a go mm -hmm. right it's worth it you'll have an absolute blast so out the two, yeah. what are you going to be putting more time into? I'll probably play Bad Company too. Yeah. Just, just partially because I, I really miss those kind of characters and I've always been kind of hoping for Bad Company 3. Um, but, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so next we have Alice Madness Returns, which is an Another messed awesome up game. game. Yeah, why do I keep getting all the messed up games? Uh, <laughs> so it's the sequel to uh, American McGee McGee's Alice, yeah. um, which also, nice little uh, bonus, comes with it. So you get both games. Um, two for one. Two for one. <laughs> uh, so just looking at um, Madness Returns, as you can see, it's based on Alice in Wonderland, but it's taken it to a completely creepy, horrific new level. Yeah, like I don't remember the Mad Hatter being a big, ugly goblin yeah. without uh, Big giant nose. I mean, you think about. I mean, the Disney film alone is messed up, but this is this is a whole new level of, of messed up. It's so dark. It's yeah. it's like a nightmare. You know, literally, uh, she's you know gone into this wonderland, and it's mm. it's, no, it's nothing wonderful about it. But one of the things that I've kind of noticed right off the bat as well is the combat. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's very kind of like Zelda. Well, um, it's interesting. The whole the whole game you wouldn't think it, but it's actually very similar to how sort of Zelda's game mechanics and yeah. you know, so the fighting, the whole the whole sort of exploring and and dungeon-esque feel to it. It's very much like a Zelda game. Even the eye there, you know, you can yeah. play it back in Zelda, it's like you always have to kind of like hit the, the eye and take eye out. Yeah. with the, the boss uh, on the on the wall, yeah. yeah. So it's, it is like, a, you you will, even though you wouldn't, and, you know, look at it and be like, wow, it's just like Zelda. Like Zelda's a lot more happy than this. Yeah, this is a bit Dark darker hell. and... Um, yeah, but in terms of, yeah, gameplay-wise, it is actually very similar. Um, so if you are a Zelda fan, 
it's definitely worth having a go on this. Um, and just art direction wise, I think the style is just really unique. Like here, um, this is this where is basically cool. you go psycho, Alice. Yeah, um, it's like hysteria, <laughs> hysteria mode. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, and you just go mental, um, and everything goes, you know, red and black and white, and yeah, just some of the like the colours used in the game, the art style. It's just a really just awesome, awesome game. Definitely worth checking out. All right, next up we got Dragon Age Origins, which is yep. pretty much uh, a lot of people's favourite games. It's such a classic. It's like a proper old school yeah. RPG classic game. I think oh, Dragon Age Origins and Skyrim mm. are always the ones that are at the top of people's list. If you go like, what are your top five games? If they're into RPGs, if they're into this sort of game, yep. it's like Dragon Age Origins. Partially because I, I always remember speaking to Julia, uh, Julia Hardy about this. Oh, yeah. She's always just like the depth to it is insane. It's actually insane. Yeah, yeah. like really. Relationships, story, <laughs> side quests, character development, extra characters. There's so much to it. It's one of those games that you could quite happily just have this game. Yeah, it's one of those, it, it can, hundreds of hours yeah. easily you can sink into it. Um, so it's made by the same people that made Mass Effect. Mm. Um, and you can tell you know, there's very similar sort of like relationship buildings and, yeah. and different story arcs and things like that. Um, but it, again, like you were saying, in terms of sort of, you know, classic RPGs, um, you, yeah, you, you cultivate relationships everything you do can have like a different outcome and you build up your character and yeah it's just you can sink so much time in it and it's it's very much a classic RPG style mm. it's like kind of medieval um, I don't know why why is it medieval RPG is always the best RPG I just <laughs> think because it's like a for me because I've always been into them because I used to like kind of do Dungeons and Dragons like with my, my dad and stuff yeah. when I was younger I did like kind of LARPing and all that kind of stuff as a, mm. as a kid and it's a kind of like a mystical world that it's you know it's not real but it's a it has kind of an incredible story and kind of like kind of depth to mm, it, which mm. you don't get. And it's like going around collecting loot, getting better weapons, oh, so fighting against bosses yeah. and like mystical creatures that are just outrageous. And you just kind of, it, for me, it's where you can kind of have that magic mm, mm. because you don't get like you can play modern games like kind of first person shooters and stuff but you never get something that surprises you where you go into one of these yeah. games you walk into a cave and you get like some five-eyed headed kind of like monstrous beast of like kind of i don't know with like yeah. a sea serpent's head and a whale for a body or something. I don't know. <laughs> that was beautiful. Also, <laughs> talking about old school RPGs, it's uh, the writers, the same, the same guys that made uh, Baldur's Gate. Ah. So I used to play that a lot. But yeah. all right, moving on. We've now got Tekken. Tekken, Tekken six. six yes. Okay, because Tekken Seven is obviously coming out soon, and I think Tekken for me is one of those fighting games that I've always enjoyed picking up and playing because I've never been the strongest at fighting games. Mm -hmm. I always kind of struggled. Like my brother and uh, one of our friends was always incredible. They always used to play Dead or Alive together. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was just there and I'd just get beaten every single time just because those are the sort of games where if people learn all the combinations and yeah. kind of like the depth to it is insane. This for me, for Tekken and mm -hmm. Tekken 6 especially, is a more accessible fighting game. So if you're not someone who plays them all the time, learns every single com combo, like learns to frame count kind of because it's one of the things when you get to a top top level of fighting games, they start noticing which combos you're doing because of like the, the position of the arm. move of your elbow yeah. or whatever. And you're having to react to milliseconds yeah. because you've got them going to pull counters. This, however, you kind of don't have to know more. You kind of get into your combat style. Um, there's also awesome character story yeah, in these. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like if you try and you play someone who's like insanely good at Street Fighter, yeah. it's impossible. You can button bash all you want. You're not winning that game. Whereas at least with Tekken, it isn't just, you know, it is more accessible. And plus there's a giant freaking bear. <laughs> <laughs> there's I actually, Kuma. I actually ate bear in Sweden. No, you ate yeah, Kuma? We had, we had bear steak, so Kuma, Kuma, he's no longer going to be in the oh, game. He no. got eaten. Oh, right. God. <laughs> it's just, just like just throwing it out there. But you have to love him. It's like the best character of all time, especially this. It's like, yes. like, this looks slower. Oh, fly kick, pow! I mean, he deserved it for that hair. Like, that hair Kung deserved Kung Fu Panda, it. Kuma, I think we all know. It. And also the bear hug as well. Yeah, just um, crushing that spine with fire as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't but even know how he did that. It's a great game to play before Tekken 7 comes out, Absolutely. so give it a go. Yeah, get ready for it. Get ready for the next battle. So there we have it, just some of the games now available and back and pat. Let us know in the comments what your favorites are and which ones you'd like to see in the future. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and to check out last month's back and pat vid whilst you're at it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.